Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining us. Today we are giving you gameplay of Dead Reckoning by AEG. And I am joined with someone who I admire a lot. I'm Alex from Board Game Co. Some of you have seen me before on my channel, some of you have not. I think most of them have seen you before well, by this point. I not only recommended I you gonna say. In, uh, in the top 10 creators you should be aware of, uh, but I also obsessively just watch your content, and you're slowly growing fast enough that you will overtake Quackalope. Not as not as fast as you think. You'd be surprised. We'll we'll see how that plays within out within a matter of time. So you just drove down about five hours to come. Is it was it to play this game or spend time with me? I'm not sure to play this game. Okay, I don't that's, think that's I a figured, question. Yeah, all right. It's Dead Reckoning. All right, that that's true. This is Dead Reckoning. If you're not familiar with Dead Reckoning, this is a game that is currently on Kickstarter. We have a Kickstarter preview in front of us here. Um, I. It is, it is doing very well at the box office. It's phenomenally well. Uh, so this is going to be an open world card building or card development game set in the universe of pirates. Um, you'll basically be able to do everything a pirate should be able to do. You can plunder, establish forts, create you know, uh, pathways level to, up to your crew. level up your crew, gain experience, fight other players and sink them to the bottom of the sea, go Throw raiding. dice inside a cardboard stand. That's a, I, I've heard it's that a is a common standard, pirate thing. it's a common pirate activity. Uh, the only thing you can't do, I think, is is uh, consume copious amounts of rum and and lose the game. To be fair, we can we can take care of that. We I can I've already started handling. Oh, okay, it. fine. Well, I'm just making uh, sure. Which it's, is going it's to be, not included in your copy of Dead Reckoning, to be clear. Which but it is going to be my excuse for uh, either how well you play, violently destroying your ship, or how poorly I roll okay. dice and uh, just and slowly crumble into ruin by the end of the How well game. you you roll dice is not affected by how much you drink. Just to be clear, the chances are the same either way. Not for me. Not for you. Okay. Not for me. The chances are bad across either the way. board. Either way. Chances are bad across the board. Alex. Because I'm lazy, sure. can you set up an overview of what this game I'm about to win is? I would love to, but the question is, do I have to do the flavor text before or after the setup? Wow. Wow. I mean, I'm honored that I, he I would, watch your he videos the same way you up, watch mine. Bring up the fact that flavor text is certainly necessary. Uh, so there you are. Am I just starting from the top? I mean, there's, Let's a, go there's a wall of flavor text there, so. Introduction. The wind picked up again, filling the sails, and finally dispersing the cannon smoke on the air. Smitty breathed a sigh of relief as the vessel that had just attacked them became smaller on the horizon. I thought we was done for, lads, he said to the others on the gun deck. Thought we was going straight to the bottom, I did. Belay that talk, Mr. Smith, Captain Kern's sharp tone commanded. Smitty winced as the captain and her side kicked Cabin Boy Gunter strode down the stairs onto the gun deck. That was the Black Rose. It will be back. Its captain will never stop until the ship is beneath the waves, or he claims my treasure for his own. The gunners all looked at one another anxiously. Any time that the captain started talking about her treasure, it went poorly. Years ago, the woman had recovered a strange chest on a remote island, one that she had never been able to open no matter what she attempted. It was her obsession, never leaving her side, having accompanied her, co accompanied her on every voyage in the years since. Smitty was painfully aware that the captain had lost many crew on that voyage. There were rumors that some of them had died at the captain's hand when her jealous obsession overtook her. In ten years, she had never stopped looking for the key that would open the chest. Smitty was content never having laid eyes on the chest as anyone who showed too much interest was living dangerously. Mr. Smith, the captain barked, what is the status of our powder stores? Good shape, Captain, Smitty answered at once. The boys were careful with their shots. We have enough powder to manage three or four more engagements on that length. I'm hoping that we don't, though, if you don't mind my saying, Captain. Stay alert nevertheless, Mr. Smith, the captain said with a nod. Gunter, she barked. The cabin boy had been fidgeting with something in his shirt and jumped when the captain called his name. Aye, Captain. Tell the cook I'll take my dinner in an hour, she commanded. Aye, Captain, the boy repeated and darted up the stairs quick as flash. Although he said nothing, Smitty could not help but notice that the necklace the boy had been fidgeting with looked a great deal like an old corroded key. That seems like a bit of it. I like it. I like when people come over and read me stories. It's, it's important. It's important. I've, <laughs> I've heard you read my, myself, not my kids, I'd say my kids, myself, a bedtime duck story. It was fascinating. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a secret Patreon exclusive. Oh. That was um, not intentional. Sorry about that. Look, I'm starting. I'm starting a whole series on Patreon called Storytime. Storytime. Where I just, when I need a break, I, I sit down and I open up a children's book and and Bill I Pete think is my favorite children's author. Okay. I've ever heard of him. Bill I Pete. haven't. Does Big he write man. duck themed books? He has right animals. Now, animals. It's on the edge. I think there might be ones with chickens. I don't recall. Chickens are duck adjacent. I'd be willing to consider it, but you know, right now we're sticking to to duck themed books. If you books. ever do start a second channel, it should be called Duck Adjacent. Uh, we have Quackalope adjacent. Oh, God. That is that is Jan's channel, 
And whenever whenever we do a, a, a Spanish only channel, because um, Jan's from Puerto Rico, sure. is, Spanish is his first language. Uh, I think we're do, I think we're following your mispronunciation. Quacalope? We're doing Quacalope. Quacalope. So we'll get there sooner or later. We're doing soon we'll have, before my time. When Jan visits again, we'll have a message from the goose. Um, either way, how uh, how do we play this game? What's the general What's the general uh, gist? So the general gist of Dead Reckoning. The general gist, as we already covered briefly, is you're a pirate. You're trying to explore. You're trying to level up. Now at the core, the end game conditions ultimately come down to the fact that along that row up there, we have a variety of things you can do that once four of them have been triggered. Piratey things. Piratey things, piratey yeah. things. No rum drinking, unfortunately. Yeah. But you'll have, once four of them have been accomplished, you will then proceed to the end game and scoring. Mm -hmm. So just to give you an example of one right now, just for context, one of those things is having 30 money. You'll start the game with 15 treasure in your treasure chest. Yep. And when you have 30 money, that is one of the four conditions to trigger end game. Now one player has to get four of those and that triggers end game. Along the way, the turn structure, this is a card crafting game. It's a card crafting game, which means that you will have cards inside sleeves that you can then pull out. You can rotate them and flip them to level up your characters. Mm -hmm. And additionally, as you explore islands, you will have the ability to take cards and add them to your sleeves to level up your characters. In a lot of ways, you could say that this is a, a deck building game in some ways, but it's unique because I am only having, my crew will not change. Instead, they will gain experience, get better, and level up across the course of the game. Yeah, so it's a it's deck building with a twist. That, yeah, cra card crafting, it's interesting. I like the idea, but I've never actually played one. This There's not first. a lot of games that lean into this mechanic. It I is actually this designer yeah. that is the sort of cornerstone on this unique John market. John Clare so. alone. I'm surprised no one's taken it up. I don't know why that hasn't happened. Partially because he does it the best. That's a good enough so. reason. <laughs> so along this way, you're going to be exploring islands. You're going to have a variety of things you can do to accomplish these objectives. As you go to islands, you can try to take control of each island bit, bit by bit, trying to accomplish mm -hmm. objectives, trying to build buildings on that islands, produce goods in the island, take them onto your ship. And those goods you produce, both on islands as well as at your port, those goods can be used to buy cards. Each mm -hmm. card has a cost in the corner that shows how many barrels of goods it takes to acquire that card. Yep. Other things you can do is you'll be able to, we already covered putting influence on islands, we already covered sailing. You'll have actions on your cards that allow you to sail further, faster, better, to explore multiple islands and get along the board. And you can also upgrade your ship along the way, uh, spending some of the re those resources you're generating to make your you know naval unit a little bit more proficient, getting extra sails, additional cannons, which increase your reach across the board. Yes. Eventually, the odds are in this video, you'll watch us first start to establish production chains, maybe get and monetize one or two of these islands, and then level up our ships to the point where we can sail across the seven seas hunting and comfortably attack each other. Yes. I, you don't, you don't, you know, you, you don't want to, you, you want to, you want to attack from the comfort of your own dock. You don't, you don't want to attack with a ragtag ship. Instead, you need of like course. 17 cannons and you need to be rolling all of the dice possible. Which is the ideal way to do things. The, 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 the cube is their cube tower over here. And this is where combat will take place on yep. this cube tower over here. When you engage in combat, you will take cubes from the various players in that combat. You will dunk them down over there. And then depending on where they land, different results will affect both who wins the combat. And let's actually, I want to do this at a little bit more of an angle. So this front camera has a slightly better view because the top camera is always going to get it. Yeah, let's do it just like that. That way, that way we've got a, a gentle slope there in front of us. And as you roll them, you'll, or roll, drop, whatever, you will eventually acquire either goods, you'll loot ships, you'll mm -hmm. acquire, you'll damage opponent's ship, and the crowns will affect who wins the combat. There's also an exploding area over here where if you roll any dice there, you get to re-roll multiple. I keep calling them dice, like, but not actually dice. But over there, it's another crown, another loot. They're dice adjacent. Here. Dice adjacent. Yeah. Dice adjacent. And this, by the way, for anyone watching, this is actually incorrectly constructed. I take no accountability for that, but I do like the way it looks. When it doesn't roll off, it actually looks I, better. I did it upside down without quite realizing it, but then we collectively decided that for filming's sake, it, yeah, it actually great. works really well. So, uh, and I think that's, am I missing anything specific in the general I don't think so. overview? Let's, let's go over our, our victory conditions, sure. um, just so people have a sense of what we're working towards, and then we'll demonstrate this by starting to play. Excellent. Uh, over here, first person in a two player game to explore five tiles, uh, discarding or getting rid of 12 barrels or 12 resources, either from your ship or the port combined, uh, that'll earn you one. 30 coin, like you said, in your chest. Five buildings. You can have a cannon, uh, a barracks, and a, what is that? Warehouse? Stores? No, a warehouse, uh, something that produces. Uh, any five of those will secure you this. Uh, we have four level, we have three level four cards. We have four ship upgrades, which are gonna be these tiles over here. Uh, we have six permanent 
control. Permanent, uh, what is it, influence tokens or something? The control of the islands, yes. Basically, you're going to be pushing back and forth over who has the most influence on a given zone. Anytime you take control, you'll be adding a cube to this far section. Those are what count towards that victory condition. We have the first person, or, or either person, the first time you sink a ship to the bottom of the ocean. Which sounds like a good win Not condition. Not gonna happen this game. Uh, and then we have, he's already told me before we started filming that the idea of a pirate game that doesn't involve hunting at least one of us to the bottom of the ocean floor doesn't sound like a lot of fun. And I was telling him, that that followed me saying, I think I might just lean into like being a really good tradesman in this video. I, I think you should. I would not attack someone who had not attacked me first. That just seems incorrigible. Uh -huh. And then down here we have four non-island battles. So you can either battle other barracks and things here at the, at the islands to reduce you know, other players' control and influence, or you can do uh, merchant ships battles or battles against other players. Um, so the first four of those, those sailing battles will secure you that. I think... That sounds about it. I think, we're ready the, to, I think we're ready to do it. the random draw, you, you got first turn. I do have first turn. So looking here at my cards, these cards are going to be structured in an interesting series of ways. First off, a lot of open space because we'll be upgrading them as we play. And on my turn, I can do a whole host of different actions. Uh, I can take any of my card actions. I can set sail or establish my sails. I can only do that one time, but it, it establishes my movement. Uh, I can influence different islands. I can go to battle with you if I have the cards that are necessary. Um, and I can move around and explore kind of different areas on the board. I can also pick up and drop off resources. So I have one barrel currently at my port. Uh, and these three here, my gunners, my crew, and my first mate have all been uh, working on the dock. We've, you know, we've been at port for a little while. They've all, they've all been struggling. I see uh, it's kind of like there's one real big hefty guy, one super skinny guy, and then a very, very short one, and they're all carrying the same size barrel back to the ship. If, if it works, it works. If it works, it works. I have a, I have a ragtag crew. Uh, so that's going to be three barrels from each three of them over here on my port. I'm first going to establish sail, because before I load my ship, I don't want to reduce the amount of, uh, amount of spaces I can move. So that'll give me two movement. Then I'll go ahead and load my barrels on. Uh, the first barrel that's loaded in each of these locations has to cover up the icon. The, uh, the icon. The, so if I spend too long out at sea, my ability to continue sailing quickly and efficiently slowly starts to reduce. It's all the run. Uh, and then I'm going to move. And I have four cards here. So what I'm, I have four barrels here. So what I'm looking at is which one of these cards do I think I want to move into to start upgrading? I'm going to do a single move here because uh, port is always adjacent. I'm going to spend three barrels to go ahead and purchase this level up card. Now, the way this will work, this is going to go on the top of my deck just as a reminder that before I draw up, this card is being added to one of the cards that I just played. Um, I'm then going to move one more time to explore this tile. This is going to be Fisherman's Cove. We're going to draw, yep, from the two stack there. And what does that say? That's, you get to produce with any island in row three or four. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, I should have three or four. I should have waited. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and spend. So this is going to allow me to add one influence marker to this island here. Spending there, I show up on uh, on Fisherman's Bay. Um, we brought a lot of resources with us. We're you know we're just a trade vessel, just a very kindly. It's Fisherman's Cove. I'm shoving. Uh, Shoving, I'm shoving the black flag down into a barrel at the moment as we so as you're not, we pull So you're up. not putting up a black flag to prevent me from possibly just moving there without warring with battle and taking the card? Uh, I'm okay if, yeah, I'm okay if you go there. I don't, I don't know that I want to engage in a battle immediately when you show no, up. Just, I'm just saying you commented on the card being nice. I just, you're not even, even planting a flag at all. Just defensively. I don't uh, even take offense. No, I'm okay. I'm okay if you take okay. that one. Sounds you can good. have it if you'd like. Oh, so, I have no interest. <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, at the end of my turn, this gets re reset so that you have the opportunity to take that with any island produced with any island in, in row, three. row three. So slightly less flexibility, but slightly less expensive. A good balance. Okay. This is going to add be added to one of the cards that I just played, and then I will draw back up four cards. Okay. Well, While you your that. turn is going, I will get the opportunity to upgrade or level up one of my crew by flipping the card behind him. This is them gaining experience across the, uh, the journey. And you can wait to see how my turn plays out. That's Any the time before your next turn. It's is sort of reactionary. If I see that I really need someone that is 
better at moving or better at immediately attacking you. Um, I can do that. I don't know why you would even think that. <laughs> I'm so, so on my sure turn, I'm gonna go going to go ahead to slaughter me, and I'm going to go ahead and lay out these three barrels, producing three more barrels on the island if I may have some. Absolutely. So I now have five barrels going on on my island because I started with an extra barrel from going second. And then with my additional card, I'm going to, like Jesse, I'm going to go ahead and set my sail to two because I currently have two sail. I am, yep. actually, I do not have another sail. Nope. Okay, I'm going to set my sail to two and then I'm going to load those barrels up into my hold. Now, in my case, the first four barrels will go over here because they have to hold the barrels over there. And because there's a limit of four, my next barrel has to go on my next icon. So if I don't clear some of these out, I'm going to start the next round with no movement whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So there we go there. Then from there, I'm going to move two, and I'm actually going to start by moving one over there. Over to uh, oh. Deep Reef Crag. And honestly, because I'm just curious, while uh, you control, while you control this island, island your hand, hand limit is increased by one. I thought that one was, on Fire Island over here, by I way. thought that was flavor text. Nope. I'm a little disappointed by what I discovered, because you're over there now. Well, that's just, shouldn't uh, have, I shouldn't have let you know you there was an first. immediate... You did go uh, first. It's actually funny you say that, because I noticed it over here, and I didn't see it over there. Mm. Anyways, from there, I'm going to, on this island, I'm going to spend three barrels to add that card, so that clears up some of my barrel spending. Yep. And I'm going to acquire that card. That's just going to add a sail. A sail. Yep. Yeah, makes it easier to get around. Helpful. I think movement early on is pretty powerful. Early on, yeah. That's that's what I'm going for. I'm oh, here. and I need to add a cube, and you need to add a cube as well, because, well, you don't yet. But I need to add a cube to exploration That here. seems reasonable. And I still have one movement left. I should lower my movement. Mm -hmm. And then for my last card, I'm going to put down a cube on that island. Now, I actually don't know in this case. With only two, do I need one or two? It is. It is. 50% is the mark. So I so automatically... I would give it to you there. Great. So yep. at this point, that means that because I've taken control, I get to put a permanent cube in the infinity zone. The way it works is you fight back and forth over the specific flag marked mm -hmm. areas that you see over here. But as you take control, each time you get a little better at knowing the island, of knowing the location, familiarizing yourself with the locals, yep. and getting permanent control over the island. Well, it's like when I, if I show up you're able to skirt around the, the edges. You know the reefs that you can cut through. You know where rock piles might yeah. be. Yeah. As I should. I've, I've been to Deep Root Crag, and I now have a hand limit of plus one. So that effectively is my turn. I now take these cards. I put them oh, into my... Oh, you do? Yes. You immediately got that. Yeah. Oh, I no, feel I don't like have that I need turn. to double... Well, I know, but you get to draw it back up. I feel like I need to double back and... Um, you should. You should. Maybe I should plant a flag instead of moving again. You know what? No, I am going to move again, though. I see. I still want to move because I have one movement An left. An additional immediate card seems super powerful. It does. It does. <laughs> so I'm going to move over here, flipping this zone with my last movement. Ooh. Uh, increased production is not bad, though. It's not bad, but I'm a little worried Because this of... is benefiting from two of them now. So I just hope that whatever I draw costs two or less. And it's a merchant ship, which I don't think I'm comfortable fighting just yet. This is a merchant ship, which merchant ships are cards you can fight or you can add them to your deck. You I can hire just... them? I may just add it to my deck. I think I'm going to straight up pay a barrel okay. and hire the merchant ship, adding it to my deck. And that's going to be two production on your port, Correct. whenever you're able to play. Which seems like a good way of getting barrels. So that's my turn. I've moved two. I've moved twice. I have leveled up two cards. I've taken two cards to add to my current cards in my hand, and I believe that makes it your turn. Yes, it does. You can now add. A, oh, I'll help you with that. Okay. And I went ahead and chose to level up my deck hand while we were while we were talking there. I gave myself a little bit more territory control and a little bit more movement flexibility um, down there on the bottom. So. And honestly, because you can take any of your turns in any order and play any cards in any order, I'm just going to lay them out here um, and start working my way through them. Uh, I have three production again down here on my port. They have these nice little port zones, so instead of having to reach across the board the whole time, you have this over here. It just represents or indicates that. Um, the reason they have these zones here is because you can still fight and interact with people in the port on the board. So having a display for everyone to see for your physical ship is important, but then also having a place just Now, I do resource. believe if you're attacking someone in their port, they get four extra defense. They do. That's indicated right there. Um, won't make a difference, because by the time I'm ready to fight you... You'll have a lot of cannons. That'll be the least of your worries. Let's see. I'm going to roll I'm gonna roll 17 black cubes. That's my. That's the hope. I, you can You can try. Can you even roll one in a black cube? I don't know. I think I can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I can figure out a way to, to roll a series of ones. Okay. I have one more territory control. I'm going to establish sails to start with, which is going to give me two because of this here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reinstate some authority there. Huh. I really, I really don't appreciate what you have going on up there. You're welcome to visit. I don't, I don't know that I can even do anything about it if or when I do visit. 
I don't like that you get to draw up, though. Um, oh, speaking of which, thank you, actually, for going to draw a fifth card. <laughs> totally forgot. That's, that's one mistake. I would have been perfectly happy not catching. I'm going to push down. I'm going to continue exploring. Did you add your token over here? You I did, did not, not yet. Thank you. So I'm adding another token there. And then this location, we have the Seahound Island. Okay. A little bit of production. Still very hard to take control of. Um, I'm down at that location. Card gets pulled out. Level 3 card. Let's see if it is anything I can purchase. It is not currently one that I can pick up because I only have one barrel. I, th I think, I mean, that's kind of a lame turn, but I think that's it. That's it? You get three barrel. Oh, because oh, all your production happened back and forth. Mm -hmm. So you're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up for a future turn that might be super amazingly powerful. We'll find out. Okay. Now, I think purely defensively, I just want to be clear, purely defensively, I'm going to upgrade my gunner to actually have a cannon. So just, it's purely defensively. Mm -hmm. I just I, so I just played the gunner, which gives me a barrel and a cannon. But that's, like you said, defensively. That is purely for defense against defense only. Uh, violent uh, merchant ships. Violent merchant ships, mm -hmm. changes of mind on our peaceful treaty, just def def defensively. Best offense is a good defense. The best offense is also a good offense. Okay, that is, anyways. Wait, best offense is a good defense. That's why I've hired six more cannons. <laughs> You're rolling it up the port while, like, I, I see just... you, I see you, a stat, like, rolling it up the, up the plank onto your dock, and I'm like, I'm, I, I have been betrayed before. I have been betrayed. Oh, so this is, there's emotional. There's uh... emotional damage. Honestly, a lot of damage. Just some of it's emotional. <laughs> so, from there on my turn, I haven't fully thought through what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to, like Jesse, I guess I'll go ahead and play my cards out one at a time and activate them as I go. Yep. So, I start with two sail because one of these ships is already covered, and I can't even offload the barrel because there's no island there. So, I begin with two sail because I'm playing the sail card. So, that helps me there, and then I can now move two. Now, honestly, I'm a little bit tempted to just return home because I think I don't want to make Jesse's mistake and have no barrels. The other thing I, I'm realizing while we're yes. playing this is whoever wins. This is the first game in person we've played together. Yes. Other than like demo running it about halfway sure, through earlier. Sure, sure. Didn't, didn't finish. And it's on camera. And it's on camera. I'm now nervous of who gets bragging rights for this first victory. Jan, this is for you. Okay. From there, I'm going to go ahead and produce three barrels at my home port. Uh huh. I might need to stock a few of these over here just for simplicity. I had two new people come play with me yesterday as well. And? No, three new people come play with me. Did you three, play this? Three you different, play something else? Other, other, other games. games. Three okay. different gameplay videos. And? Did you win any? Did you win any? No. It's not looking good. I did really bad. Well, then that's a, that takes away my bragging rights. <laughs> no, it doesn't. What? You, just anyone can beat you? Everyone has bragging rights. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> Except for I Jen. I feel like I could do something. So I have two movement. Now, with my first movement... I'm going to move over here, uh -huh. and then with my Q, my deck hand, I'm going to further dominate my control zone so that Jesse now she actually put out. Actually, I think it doesn't really matter at all, does it? While you control this, I need to go there. Okay, and then with my second move, I'm going to move home so that I can. I'm gonna leave it over here, but that way I can pick up pick up my barrels. I'm going to unload a barrel at my Drop dock off to start to further increase my sale next turn, and that's my turn. No cards acquired, and it's on to you. Okay, don't forget to uh, upgrade while you yep. while you're waiting for me. So, I chose to upgrade my Buccaneer. A little bit more, little bit more zone control. Uh, I still have that barrel there, which is sort of now annoying me because it restricts my movement so much. Uh, I'll establish my. Where do I want to drop off? Can you toss a barrel overboard? I could. I could toss the barrel. I could also drop it off on the we'll island if I just didn't want to deal with it. I'm going to just establish my sail. I have two sail. That's going to happen with my captain card here. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and do a produce action. And I'm going to do a produce action right here in this location. So this is going to produce two, two barrels, two coins, plus a coin from each adjacent location. Nice. So we're talking four, four coins, coins and, two barrels. and two barrels here on Fisherman's Cove. I'm then turning around and I'm sailing back to Fisherman's Cove, where... I am using my Buccaneer's action to establish two more influence over this cove, which is going to gain me control and one permanent influence. Nice. Which now means I can take all of these onto my own ship. Now I have to designate them. I can carry four there, and I am really limiting my sail action now. And that is the maximum amount of stuff I can also carry. Interesting. Uh, I still have one production back down here, and I still have one sail left. 
I also could purchase, what's this do here? Produce with any island in row three or four. Mm, you really want to produce in row two, which is sadly not the same. I mean, I might eventually want to produce in row three or four, but I think I'm gonna move, I think I'm gonna move over this way. I'm gonna gain, do a little bit more exploring while I'm out here on the ocean. Empty sea, but again, further boosting your production. Empty sea, and I, I, I do also get to add a token over here. And we get an interesting card. And I can purchase, I can't purchase that. Wow, I'm short from purchasing that. What does this one do? It's, it helps take advantage of wheels. Wheels are a resource that shows up on a lot of your cards that augments things that take advantage of how many wheels Primarily you have. Primarily it deals with the captain. I mean, Primarily. he's standing at the head of the ship, but oftentimes, awesome yeah, oftentimes your wheels will do a multiplier, uh, or I've seen a lot of them deal with kind of victory points or coins specifically. Yeah, and these are these are pretty cool. They're, they're, the wheels seem all over the place and not helpful enough at first, but as you get cards or level up your captain, they'll be very It's an end game build. Um, that's it. That's my turn. Okay. Now I have to revise my own opinion here because, well, do we put out any more cards? No, we're good. And I'm kind of tempted by this card. Gain a random row one advance. What's a row one advance? These are these, right? Yep. That is that is certainly intriguing. <sighs> Changes my whole move here. But I think that's gonna... interesting too because you could build a strategy around wheels paired with that instead yeah. of. Uh... I think I, I'm inclined to go that direction. It wasn't my original now, thought one, process. Now, one note to keep in mind, though. If you gain that, that advance, you have to add it, and you don't you don't remove the experience your crew has throughout the course of the game. Okay. So you're always building them. You're never, you're never pulling them backwards. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my Buccaneer, given the situation that just changed over here. And I'm going to start with two sail. I'm going to set my sail to two, all my barrels unloaded. I am then going to load. I'm going to actually produce a barrel followed by producing a barrel, and that's two barrels produced, which I will actually only load five of them, because I'm anticipating having to frequently return to my dock, which I'm starting to see as a trend, which I like. It means the, mm. makes, makes the, the movement of the board but more It makes important. sense too, though. Yeah, it makes thematic sense. I like yeah. it. Initially, you it's, you kind of feel the need to explore in this game, because it's a pirate game. The seven seas, arg, but not arg? necessarily arg. Is that your pirate arg? That's my lion from before. I just <laughs> blurred my, my throat. <laughs> just mixed it up a so, bit. I'm going to load those five barrels over here, putting them over here mm -hmm. and over here as such. Then I'm going to move two. I'm going to start by moving one to Fire Lake over here, Fire, Fire Island, not Lake. I'm going oh, to play the there. Buccaneer. Stop. Dropping off two Stop. cubes along with a permanent cube no. control and increasing my hand size by one. <laughs> Stop. Okay. This is fun. I'm enjoying this. Thank you for inviting me. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and play this to put another control because why not let's just be safe i'm so upset about this and then finally i'm going to purser i get to produce on one island uh-huh and i'm going to produce on one, do it on ooh, my one coin one coin only i believe i'm gonna i think i will not sir uh you get a modifier here so it'd be two coins there but that's not oh interesting two coins thank you yes okay so oh, I produce and those two are coins. very valuable coins that you're adding there oh you should probably use helpful. the uh, pennies i will immediately pick those up and load them into my treasure chest uh, Oh yeah, mine. No, no, they go on your ship first. You gotta oh, get them back oh, to oh, port. Oh, you gotta get back to port. God, that seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. Okay. Because if your finally, ship sinks, you lose all your money. Treasure, treasure, all your treasure. So, I believe that is most of No, I have one movement left. I will take one more movement. Move over here. Hi, We're buddy. friendly. We're friendly. Hey. And I will. Oh, I forgot to acquire this card. I'm paying one barrel for that card. You're you're and standing on the bow, holding up seven cards four in your hand. Barrels for this card. Like, so I what take, is? What even is that? It's just a lot of a lot of, a lot of cards and wheels. I see them using these two wheels to build off one another. You bought both? I bought both. Five barrels. One and four. And that's why I left one barrel home. I was like, you know what? One barrel can stay here. Don't 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 crap my style. And from there, we set up for next round. Make sure Jesse. your coins are positioned appropriately. Because you go... only have a limited amount of storage before your ship starts to upgrade. Interesting. Like me, one thing that I just realized, uh, and it, it deals with who I upgraded, I am so full that if I didn't have movement cards... You couldn't move. I have no move. I would have Which to is, dump a barrel That's over. why I left this barrel behind, although yep. I didn't anticipate the coins. So it, it, it does work out. Don't forget to upgrade a card if you haven't already. I and did. over to you, sir. I did. Um, I've got a Buccaneer. I've got a crew. I've got a Produce. And this was the uh, this was the sailing actions that I desperately needed. So I, that's what I upgraded. I upgraded my deckhand. Um, all the way up to level 3. So I'm going to go ahead and establish my sail. Gain a gain a movement of two. I am going to produce over here on this far island because I really liked the effect of that. Um, two barrels, four coins. You did read these cards, right? Uh, That's I didn't read those cards. You should pay attention to this card. I thought about it after you mentioned it. 
One mercenary, uh, two produce, battle, gain one. Victory point. Immediate hit. Immediate hit. Well, hits are different than victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit, hit. There's damage, and then there's victory towards the battle condition itself. The way that the rulebook sets it up is I could succeed in my task while still being, but with my ship still being in ruins, um, scaring you away from port or preventing you from, from getting somewhere specifically, but I'm still limping back home. I, I've seen Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, a destroyed you ship know how it can works. still be scary. <laughs> All right, I've done this. I'm going to do a single movement forward. I'm then going to add my own influence. So one, two, three, popping down here, which means I remove two of yours. I take back control of this location. Um, there's your Thank you, sir. pieces back. And that's that's how this push and pull, because these will never be removed. Yes. But now this back and forth creates kind of a weighted In system. Center. Right now it's four versus two, but mm -hmm. for now, I have, I have cards. I am going to spend those barrels. Thank you for pointing this card out to me, because that upgrade seems fairly reasonable. Uh, and I'm going to use one production back home, and then I'm going to fully, I'm going to fully move on back home. So I'm coming back up here to port, uh, where I can offload my coins into my bucket, my barrels my onto bucket. my uh, my shelf. And that is going to be that's going to be my turn, and I'm going to spend some time upgrading a card. Okay, so I have to upgrade one as well, and you unfortunately did you did make me a little not thrilled about. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my gunner again. This one's actually not nearly as attacking, but it does give me an extra barrel production. Plus, in battle, I get to drop an additional two cubes, which is helpful. Okay, so let's go ahead and play these out. I have not... Oh, first, let's go ahead and take out a new one of these. Yep. Here's the interesting thing. There is a lot of... There are a lot of decisions we can make in this game. And this game is fairly easy to follow and understand what you can do. Like, yeah. it is a... For me, it is a... It feels like a complicated game in terms of opportunity, but I am, I'm not struggling with iconography or... or Correct. Although it might be a bad time to confirm, but this is you get one gold, right? Uh, yeah. Plain and simple. Yep. Plain onto your ship. Okay. Onto your ship. That seems helpful. Yeah, the iconography is overall very good. There's a few, like with most games with any icons, it takes a little bit to just get the hang of what's going on, but from there it's pretty simple. It's not a lot, not a lot of complexity. I just here. when I was initially reading the rulebook and talking with Jen, I felt I felt slightly overwhelmed by the amount of stuff you could potentially do. And now playing, I'm like. No, it's I'm, I'm able to simple. follow along. Yeah, you, you might need one, one or two rounds just to get the feel, but after that, you, you mm -hmm. get into it. Okay, so, speaking of getting into it, I might try to... I'm going to set my sail. So my sail is going to start with... I have one sail here, mm -hmm. plus my one in the boat, so that gives me two sail. And I'm torn between the various things I want to do versus the things I probably shouldn't do. Because I can't afford anything, and if I explore, it is unlikely that I will succeed where I want. So, do I risk it or do I return home? I think I'm going to be cautious and return home, but a little bit on the way, a little bit of a ding on the way. So You're in a battle in port? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not that foolhardy. I am bloodthirsty, not that bloodthirsty. So along the way, I'm going to drop this card to bump off one of your cubes over here. You may have that back. Okay, and because we both have control, my thought is at 50%, we you don't do. swap. That could be. Because I was thinking about going up here, Makes and sense. if I would placed one there, I don't You're think I would thinking. have retaken it from. That's reasonable. Yeah. I don't actually know the rules. We can find that out, but that seems reasonable for now. That was just my that was my initial yeah. thought or interpretation. No, no, I remember a long time ago I once heard the concept of if you're unsure of a rule in a game, house rule on the spot, check it up later. Don't bog down your entire game with continuous rule corrections. Yeah. Okay. I play Kingdom Death enough to know that. Uh, I have not. I have not had that privilege yet. Just vote against yourself. Vote against yourself. Oh yes, the 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 harsh rule. Okay, so with one more movement, I will move back to port, where I will proceed to do two barrels, three barrels, four barrels, and five barrels. Wow. So I get five barrels to add to my port, and I'll call that a day. No. Oops, here we go. I believe, Jesse, it is your turn. I have not purchased any cards. It's straight to you. Okay. I did go ahead and do... I thought I went ahead and So you should have one extra card, I believe. Uh, you now control Fire oh, Island. You're right. You reminded me, I'll remind you. Right. Fair oh, and I, sorry, I didn't ever draw up, I didn't ever upgrade a card. I was so focused on you. Um, let's see here. In anticipation, simple, simple defense, defense, defense. like we've, like we've talked about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade a gunner. Let's see what we're doing here. I have the most production possible. 
but you're in port. That's excellent. One, two, three, four, five production. Added to the six I already have. Just shy of 12, sir. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to establish my movement without taking any barrels with me, mm -hmm. which is going to set me off at two. Now you can only carry seven. <clears throat> I could only carry seven, but I don't need to bring any with me at this Just point. Seven. Unless I wanted to... No, I'm not bringing any with me. And I'm going to sail right down here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up everything from my island. Well, I don't have to immediately, but here's what I'm doing. I'm going to discard all of the barrels okay. to go ahead and secure the... Uh, the influence here for 12 barrels being discarded. Wait, so how did you get that extra barrel? I had 11 here, and I added one for my island over here. And you can immediately, you don't have to be at port can to be it? from the ship or from port. Excellent. Seems like just. Just an immediate discard. Uh, only thing I had left is going to be that, that shotgun there, and I do not need to use that. So I find it interesting, because already in this game, you've explored three islands. I've only bothered exploring one. I'm mostly just capitalizing on what I know at this point. You're potentially going to ramp up with the amount of... Uh, potentially, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, so for my turn, and again, don't forget to upgrade a card, do all that. Uh, no cards or bots, so I can go straight to whatever. And I believe I am... Did you move my ship there instead of your own? Yep. Good job. Good job, Jesse. Let's swap that back. <laughs> okay. I like purple and yellow. Uh, you should... You, I, you set up! I chose our you two. I chose, both of, I chose both of my favorite colors. Purple and yellow? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play this along with another wheel over here. Which will oh, let me get interesting. a random road to resource. So that will go on top of my deck. Ooh. What'd you pull? Looks cool. Merchant ship. Extra sales. Two sales, which That's is not very bad cool. at all. Okay. Then I am going to do barrel production, and I have three of these. Now I'm going to start by setting my speed, which my oh I forgot to dunk these into my hold. And I will set my speed to three. Uh, two. I lied. Two. So I have two movement. Um, barrel production of three. So I'll take three barrels. Mm-hmm. This barrel situation is ramping up pretty quickly. I think it is time to head down to the, the nether islands areas. Okay, but I don't have enough speed to do so. That's, that's a bit of a waste. Okay. I need some... I'm realizing right now I would really like to upgrade my ship as soon yeah, as possible. But I, do we have, we have... We don't have any cars to do so. I, yeah, we don't yet. So we have to get them. Yeah, we're going to okay. have to purchase and cycle so through. I'm going to load up on all the barrels I possibly can in preparation of buying as much as I possibly can. Although understanding that it will bog me down next turn. Mm -hmm. Very much so. But... I'm not sure what I'm even buying this turn. I'm kind of going exploring. And, I, oh, I do have an additional sale. That's helpful. Excellent. So I'm going to risk it. I'm going to, you got one shot, make it count. Oh, and I get two more barrels here. I forgot about that. So those go to my island. Let me pay attention to all those card aspects. And then I'm heading down here. So I'm going to explore this. And it is fortunately an island. Skull Island, Skull island in fact. We're going Pulling to... from three here. Yes. So this one, battle, draw a card. You may play it now if it has a uh, rocket ship symbol on it. Draw that many cubes. Cool. Okay. Not actually that interesting in the card, but I did explore an island. So I will head down there. Bit of a regret over there. I do have three cards that will allow me to drop influence on that island, mm -hmm. which puts me one shy away. So hopefully next turn we'll see how that plays out. Do I even want to buy that card? Draw a card. You may play it now if it has on it drop that many cubes. I think I will hold off on drawing that card. A little nervously, I'm debating. You know what, I think I will buy that card. I will spend one barrel and buy that card. Hmm. And that is my turn. Okay. Don't I'm going... A card. <sighs> yeah, I upgraded a card already. Uh, we, can, we can put a new card for you. Oh, sorry. Yep, there we go. I ended up upgrading a deckhand here. Okay. Um, give me a little bit more movement. And let's see see what my options are now. Decent zone control. Total of four movement right out of the gate. And the question is, do I want to do I want to set sail? Or do I want to pick up a bunch of things? Or do I want to make it hard for you to... Uh, make it hard. Make it hard. I don't know what you're doing. Just make over. it hard. Could get a maximum of three there. So I could compete with you, but I couldn't, I couldn't directly take it over. I really... I really like what I have going on, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm sailing down one. I'm going to use my zone control, placing three cubes, which will hit that 50% mark. So, one here. Uh, do I want to purchase... You used wheels really effectively. I still don't know 
You have to get a card, unfortunately, because the problem is your captain is the one who uses your wheels by default, but it's yeah. the level four captain. Yep. So it's a little tricky. I'm going to continue sailing. So that was one sail action. Do I want to move anywhere and pick up something while I sail? You know, I think... I think I like the production over here. So I have two movement that'll let me sail back through, pick up all of these coins and barrels, stick them onto the board, another movement down where I can purchase this for this barrel, and then a final movement down where I explore this last tile here. And we have the Cat's Claw. Uh, three areas, decent gold production, the best. And let's see what pulls out here. Three, uh, battle action, move one cube to an adjacent damage zone. Uh, battle, if you win, take one less fire. Nice. It's not bad. And that, that's going to start if, giving you... If we you... ever attack each other, which I don't imagine we will. I, I see no reason why we should. No, no, no. And especially since I'm trying to drive endgame. Of course. Of uh, course. Without, without fighting you. You, you are doing a decent job, honestly. I'm, I'm just building up the deck, hoping for a longer game. I may have to sink your ship to make that happen, but <laughs> it will just be out of necessity, not out of desire. You might, because you, I mean, at that point, it it would honestly be established as a threat if you, yeah. if I'm driving endgame, that, I, it's kind of like me attacking first. Basically, that's yeah. why I see it. It's, it's purely, <laughs> okay, is, my, is it my turn? It is your turn. Go? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and play. Oh, so and go ahead and pull a card there just oh. to see if you want it. I can't reach it, so it doesn't matter, but I should still do it. Okay, so on my turn, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to start by, unfortunately, I can't, I could actually offload things. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, you know, perhaps I will do that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put one cube down on this island over here, which does immediately give me control of the it island. Will. It also means I can immediately offload all my barrels to then set my speed to two and then pick up all the barrels. Mm -hmm. And because I have another sail over here, actually, that because my sail, my my sail becomes three effectively. One sail plus offloading and then doing that. Sure. Um, and then I think I will reload them because I do definitely want some things. I get three movement, I can explore one island, and this card is the same as that card, so I'm not to worry about that one. Producing any island in rows three or four is intriguing, but I don't know if I need it. I like this. I like this a lot. Captain wheels and then barrels on your ship times the, the amount of captain wheels you have. have. I am definitely heading that away. That changes my entire turn. But I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, three down here. Mm -hmm. If it makes you feel better, I was planning on going over here and messing with you there. Wow. So that's a good thing for you. I'm going to go ahead and return two barrels. I'll start a little supply over here. Yeah, sure. And I will take this card, putting it on top of my deck. I will also spend one barrel, two barrels, and produce on one island. Now, the island I produce to on. The middle one. I'm actually going to do it over the no, middle no, no, one. Do the middle do one. That one. Right? I think not. Well, so may I have a coin down there? I'll think about it. And then I produce two barrels back at my home port. I believe that's a wrap. Mm. I put out a new card down here, and it's okay. your turn. All right. Let's see what you're sticking down. Ooh. Cannons and get... That's very tempting, sir. Control per cannon. That is very tempting. So I... See, now's a good time to realize we should probably start thinking about putting up our flags. I haven't upgraded a thing yet. And I will. I'm going to upgrade my first mate. Which now will allow me to potentially build buildings if I want. Which I can't afford to do at the moment, but it's a nice thing to have. Uh, three production. Let's go ahead and do that over here in port. One cannon, if by chance you were going to attack me. Which, why would I you know do that? I'm doing so. Two, three, four, five. Let's establish that there. Um... Plus two barrels. It's now a good time to point out we should probably be putting cubes on the control of islands. Uh, yeah, we could. So I believe I control two islands and you control three. Yeah, in terms of the long yeah. longevity. Um, and we haven't had any... Did you win against... You didn't fight a merchant nope. ship. Nope. All right. Establishing move, I only have one move. So I am... I'm moving slow. I'm going to move over in this direction, find myself in good company, and that is that is going to be my whole turn. 
Okay. So I got to rotate one of these, which is always fun. I think and you did not take the cannon one. Intriguing. Nope. Okay, so I will upgrade my other gunner then, because I think I like that card a lot. It's a way of, of, of taking advantage of those defensive guns in a less offensive manner than, than usual. Okay, so I do not, that's not an island, I don't control it at all, I can't do anything with it. Um, I will note, by the way, I forgot to put a coin down here, two more coins. Because oh yeah, of the introduction Jesus. bonuses. Yep. Okay, so on my turn, I will set my movement to, it looks like I have one movement from here, plus one movement from here, so I have a movement of two. I will then immediately spend four barrels. Now, can I spend my barrels first and then set my movement? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll spend my barrels first, returning them to a supply over here. Acquire this card, then set my movement to three. And then the problem is I have no more barrels. So I actually need to think this through in order to ensure I can do everything I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, 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 and then this. So because I have two wheels, I can take a free level one advance. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is going to be putting three barrels in my home port. And with my three movement, I think I will head home. And I think I'm just gonna stay there so that I can start off next turn nice and fresh. That's my turn. It now goes to you, I believe, and we put out a new level two card. Okay. Oh, another wheel one, I will point out. And I've secured one level four. Here's a wheel one in case you want that. Oh, the same same type you got? Yep. Uh, so I secured one level four over here, mm -hmm. so I'm pointing that out to you. And that is the deckhand, who I just upgraded again. I've got an overwhelming amount of wow, wow, your deckhand really gives you flexibility. One, two, three, four, five, Six total movement, plus two potential control. Hmm. So I'm going to go down to start to flip this tile. Uh, Trader's Rock. So let's go ahead and pull a level four out of the pocket here. Whoo! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. If I see you chase that. No, no. I told you. I am peaceful. I don't know why you, you hear things. Two production over here in my home base. So I've got five movement left. Wow. I'm going to move one, two. I'm going to go ahead and pick up as many Whole of these of as I can hold. See, this is the part where I really do start to become concerned. Because I think one, I have two. a better deck, but you and really are chasing endgame. One, two. One, two going to establish no. two influence over here, Bastard. knocking those off. And you get a permanent influence on the side as well. And I get a permanent influence on the side, which will add, so I did a fifth explore here, and I have another permanent influence here. So this is now Yours. me. Um, and I have I one you move. you reduced me one over there. Why did I reduce you one? No, up there over there. I only oh, sorry. One. No, no, no. no, no I no. think you added one. I'm saying I only have one island that I control. No, you, these are the, what you're triggering. Oh. So you should have three. Oh, interesting. I misunderstood that. Yep. Okay. It is the permanent marker, the permanent right. influence marker, not the, uh, island not the overall. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move. My last move pulls me back into port. And I am curious... I'm really curious about what, sir? About this. How much money do you have? Yep. Count away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, I have 26 cash right now. It's not enough. Four coins. It's not enough. It isn't enough. But four coins. <laughs> Okay, so I, my turns are starting to get increasingly more complicated, which I feel slightly bad about, but it's just the, the nature of the game, more going on. It's also the first time playing, so still a lot to learn here. So I'm going to start by setting my sail to one, two, three, four. I also have a ridiculous amount of sail, plus my initial two, so I have a total sail of six. I will then pick up as many barrels as I can. I'm starting mm -hmm. to really want those ship upgrades because it feels like I need them. I'm going to pick up all the barrels I can at this point. I will still produce one, two, three, four barrels in port. May I mm -hmm. have four barrels? Absolutely. Okay. Miss and it. then I produce an additional two from this because I have two wheels and I produce a barrel. Oh, that, that, what is that? That's a barrel, yeah, barrel. Barrel on your ship. Barrel on my ship. Well, so that I just will pick up fewer ships. So can I get another two barrels? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And then I believe I've used this one, I've used this one, I've completely used this one, which leaves this and this in terms of the domination aspect, which there will be domination. Now, is there a reason you didn't pick up coins when you took control? I was already full. Oh, well, lucky me then. Mm -hmm. I will head right back down there in that case. Okay. With my first move. So I will do my move by one. I will immediately pay to this one to yep. take control back absolutely. along with a permanent one, which means I also get to put one You over absolutely here. do. Okay, I will pick that up. No, I can't. I am full. I see your problem. Mm -hmm. I see your problem. Okay, but I have more movement. And one, two, three, four. Okay, four it is. I'm going to go one, two, three to go down here, which gives me an exploration. Yes, it does. Now, have you yeah. been adding these? I feel like you've no, explored I've more only than three. Well, it's, I mean, you ha I've only done three. I've only done this one, this one, and one other. You've been doing most of the exploring this game. Okay. I've been taking advantage of that. Okay, this will flip. We have no text on the island itself. We do add a level four card, which do seem very pretty. And we have a merchant ship. Copy another advance on this card. Intriguing. And this one is going to be four, and I have a total of seven barrels, and I have one movement, two movement left. So I think I'm going to buy <laughs> this one. Uh-huh. And then move over here uh -huh. and buy this one. Yeah. Um, now the question is, which island do I want to try to settle on? I will put a token down here for my last action over here, and that is my turn. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. It's on to you. Um. Out of. <sighs> I don't like that thing you just got. Gonna be honest. I'm I'm okay with that. I can I can live with that that lack of happiness. All right. I upgraded my first mate this time, which makes purchasing things a little bit more affordable. So one important thing to note, because I, I feel like we're we're j I don't know why I feel like this, but I just want to say, this this cannon will not help me if you happened. To fight with me. Happen. The cannons though that are in my hand, I can play on your turn when we engage in a battle. So they are so having them in your deck that you can cycle through is valuable. Interesting. Because I'll be playing. Be, and because of the rule that you can upgrade a card at any point between the end of your turn and my turn. I could mm -hmm. react with an upgrade, play uh, it down. all hands on deck, and then uh, and then fight with you. Alright, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm generating two, establishing a uh, establishing a colony. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and do a build action because I can spend two plus four uh, to build, or I'm going to actually do one extra. So I'm going to build a cannon and a fort here on this location, making it that if you sail through this location, you'll be fired upon. Oh, that's interesting. See, I knew that rule, just to be clear, but it, we've never entered the game state mm -hmm. where it impacts gameplay. Which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a thing. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just so we can keep track of it, add two cubes here so that we know how many I have built. Um, now you could destroy buildings, which would remove that potential victory condition that's from me. Um, I want to establish my movement. I have no sail other than my ship right now. So I have a, a movement of two. Use this card. Let's go ahead and do production on this central zone because it seems fairly advantageous. Five coin. I, we have not put out two new cards for these zones over here. Okay. I can't reach them, so it Whoa. wasn't too... This is certainly a jack of all trades. Holy cow. He just becomes skilled. He's on. He's been on the, on the sea long enough. He's become skilled at he's everything. He's trader's rock. He can do anything. Um, I've done my barrel production. All I really have left is my move and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of zone control. And I don't... I like having a full draw of hand. So I'm gonna move down. I'm gonna do some control here at this point. Adding one more of my own. You, sir, uh, will be attacked. <laughs> wait, 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 I haven't done anything. This is twice now. I haven't, as far as I'm aware, I have not instigated any such, any such battles. You said you were a peaceful, peace, peaceful I, man. My, my patience has its limits. <laughs> Are you done with your turn? I am done. Okay, with so my I will note for anyone paying attention, I did not remove my seven barrels when I paid for my two giant cards last turn. So oh, see, I wouldn't have even I, said anything. Well, I wanted to yeah. in case I, I almost debated just taking them off myself. But for anyone paying attention, I want it to be leave very a comment. clear. And yes, okay. So, on but my they'll turn. leave a comment when it happens, and then they'll go back and edit the comment saying, "Oh no, he caught it." 
don't you feel bad about yourself right now? No. Don't. No. I really appreciate people who leave comments. I, no, well, is, not the comments, just the being wrong. Well, well my ethics are, are without no, no, no. question. Here's here's the thing that I I really love is I don't know that I've ever played a board game correctly in my and, entire history, but there are people that do play board games correctly, and it is so invaluable to go in and play something like Root. I've played 20, 30 games of Root, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm still missing rules. Cole still misses rules. Like, I'm okay with this. But the amount of comments that go down, like the last game we just played, I tried to pay as close attention to movement rules and, and, and control over territories because that is something I consistently get wrong. Interesting. And playing the game more closely to accurate does enhance the game experience because yeah. it is designed in a way that... Of course. So... This is one of the things I actually appreciate playing games online because sometimes you find out that you're doing something wrong all along as soon as you try doing something yeah. and you can't. And so I think some people get a lot of pushback or feel feel hurt when someone is correcting them. No. And I don't. I genuinely I genuinely appreciate and love the people that, that take the time to do 72 timestamps. So leave as many comments down below with all the ways we have butchered this game. Whoever wins, I'm sure I'm sure we'll pull down that victory step by step. I had a game where I felt so good winning and then the entire my entire game group was just tracking the just comments to see to see when it was bad enough, when I'd made enough mistakes that they felt they could nullify my victory. So, starting with my turn, mm -hmm. I actually have a decent amount going on here. To begin with, I get to draw a card, which means shuffling my deck. Well, actually, I already shuffled it. That's pretty nice. Yes, it's just an extra card. That's always nice. And it's this card in pattern. Now, pack. you don't get to plan around it or upgrade it. Sadly. But... Well, I'll take what I can get. Yep. I'll take what I can. Then I have two wheels, which means I get a random phase one advance, which will go on top of my... Ooh, another card draw. Excellent. Okay. And then that card is now done. I can move that off to the side. And actually, that's not true. I get a barrel production back at port, which I will do. This card, I'll do my barrel production. This card, I will do my barrel production. And then this card, I will do two barrel production. Mm -hmm. so I have a whole bunch of barrel production at port, just stocking up over there. Now, there is a victory condition. I am very okay. aware of it. I just wanted to make sure. I have 13 barrels. Mm -hmm. okay, then I have one cannon, two cannons, three cannons, <laughs> and the ability to therefore just take control of an area. Now, I forgot something. I still haven't forgotten. I have not yet set my sail. My sail is one plus two because I have an empty boat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with going one forward. And just, just head on over here. I have no idea why. It just looks like the kind of place I like to be. Mm -hmm. I will then immediately do one, two, three times the number of cannons, putting out three ships, three uh, air tracking areas, which puts us tied, which Whoa. means nothing. But then I'll add one more with this one, knocking you off and rest control from wow. yourself. Wow. Okay, you will get this back. Those cannons, I like the, I like thematically though, I like the idea that you just sail into port and the intimidation factor alone. Yeah. I love it. Also, one of the things I like is I like that the game gives you an opportunity to take advantage of actually being non-combative and benefit from it. I mean, yeah, that's true. Non-combative is a relative term, obviously. But, but yes, presence. Presence. This yeah. is giving you, this is giving you an actual actionable use of those cannons without needing 100%. to attack someone. And I love the way you, I mean, flavor text, but I love sure. the way you made it intimidation. I am yeah. intimidating. I've never been called intimidating in my life. It's nice to hear. <laughs> From there, I will then go ahead and produce on that one I'm, island. Now I, that like I from a distance, with yep. all my tattoos and stuff, people are like, oh, and then I get closer, he's like, he's got a Yoshi! <laughs> so I will now produce on the island that I have control of. There are no modifiers, so I will produce two barrels. I will immediately pick them up and then buy this card. Uh-huh. And that represents my turn, which I'm, I'm happy with, all things considered. I'm actually okay with your turn as well. Uh-oh. Oh my god, that's not good. <laughs> that is not good. Because I thought you were coming after oh, me. Sorry, one more thing. I, I, I will move because I have two more movement. I'm going to go one, two. And because you have that annoying thing there and I'm not interested in fighting it yet, I'm going to go one, two. Okay. Excellent. And now it's on to you. Mm, okay. Interesting. So let's see what I'm actually able to do. So I, I got another level four, by the way. Which is, yes, I got one as well. So I have two of the cubes there. Okay. So they're catching up with you on the point part. I upgraded my first mate, which is going to allow me to do, if I had the resources for it, I could build three buildings. I do not quite have the resources, nor the territory, if I'm going to be honest. Um, let's go ahead and first by start by establishing my sale action. I have a total of two plus two from my board, so four total potential sale. Uh, three production. All right, I think... I think this is it. Uh-oh. I think I've what got are you doing? this. What are you doing? I think I've got it. Got what? I think I've got the game. The game? I think I'm pulling end. What do you mean? How are you pulling end? I'm not sure, but I might be. So I'm sailing down. Okay. I'm going to use my first mate, who I just upgraded, to produce. 
three, four, five. Okay. So for a cost of five, I can produce three buildings, one of each kind. So a villa, a cannon, and Your an Your first armor. mate is level four. That's insane. Yeah. Good job. Uh, we're going to pop those down here. Oh, you bastard. Because I, yeah, because I still, I had maintained control yes, of this. Yes, you have. Um, that's going to be a total of five buildings. Which means that pulls off, and that locks in. And that's three endgame conditions. It is. What's the fourth? I'm going to go ahead and just collect some coin. And can you make it back in time? I have, I moved one down, I have three movement left. Okay. So I'm going to pile my ship full of coin. I'm going to sail back into port. Okay. And I'm just going to th start throwing gems off the deck. So you just triggered endgame. Yeah, so you have one know. turn left. I have one turn left. You do not get a starting turn. I get one turn left. This is a little depressing and demoralizing, especially after we made a whole big deal about how many games you <laughs> I lose. I didn't want to fight you. About how many games you lose and how it's not even a victory to <laughs> defeat you. This is going to be fairly demoralizing. I'm so I'm so thrilled. I was so nervous this whole time. This is going to be fair. <laughs> I ha was thrilled with my deck. I did not realize we were near close to endgame. <laughs> I, I, like I knew it like a turn or two ago. And let's uh, see if I can... I can attack you on port, right? You could. I yeah. may do it just for the sake you of... You could, because we didn't use this at all. We well, didn't even show off the fancy well, battle and mechanics. And that's why I'm attacking you in port. As a service to the audience, uh -huh. I'm attacking you in port. The funny thing is, from the very beginning, you've been, you've been building. Like I've been you, building. You were really powerful. Do you want to see my and turn? very scary. I would like to see your turn. I might even be able... And the problem is that, you see here, I can't actually get to you without going through one of these. Which well, is problematic. And... Let's yeah, see. so when you when you go through one of these, this is just going to fire on you. And then I'll have to fight the building, or do I You don't have to fight it. Oh, interesting. To get rid of it, you'd have to fight it. I don't feel the need to. But when you sail through, you'll just take a you'll take a hit. And I can still gain influence on this, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's have fun. Let's let's do a final when turn. When you do, you remove all my buildings. When I Ooh, that's right. So let's go ahead. That's going to be it's going to be a pretty decent last turn. So to start with but I draw I don't, two cards. That won't take my win condition. It won't. It won't. It won't. Yeah. I just don't draw one card cuz I'm supposed to have one card less cuz don't have this area. Oh, so, and the game still comes down to victory points. Of course. I know I know you don't win yet. I just think you will. I triggered okay. end game. I well I didn't mentally realize. I thought I just won. No, 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 no. It still is coming down to it still comes down to points, but you have all the money to I begin with. Do I do have and all you the have money. more of the things that give you points to begin with. I so do also have that. It's just not looking good for me, honestly. I have a great deck. Sadly great decks aren't how you become good pirates. So let's just do a lot here. I've already drawn my two cards. I get a random advance, which I don't think advances are worth points. There's no point taking one, correct? Uh, maybe I'll do it if I need to, but I have three. I mean, I have enough to get a level three advance. Oh, gain a row three. If I can get a row four advance, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, row three. Could. I'll take one just in case it matters. Nope, nothing looks, nothing there. Okay, so that's this over here, and I will also produce one barrel. I don't think it'll matter, but I'll go ahead and do that. And I think this card is now out of play as far as all things are concerned. Uh, this one over here, I have, my sail is one, two, three, and then plus my two, so I have a total of five sail. Mm -hmm. So I can do a lot of things this turn, potentially. And this, actually, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this for something else. So I have four sale. Because I'm going to use this card for something else. Because I think that's going to be more impactful at this point. Um, and now, how much stuff can I do in terms of damage? So, if I have four sale total, I'm going to go one, two. Or I can go one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. I think that makes more sense. So, do you get victory points for controlling islands? Yes, uh, you do. Yes, you, do, you, do. Okay. you absolutely do. So I'm going to go one with one sale. Mm -hmm. Put down two cubes which will give me control of this island. And uh, now's a good time to cover. When we run out of cubes, what do we do? Because it feels like it feels like there's not enough cubes. Um, I'm not... I'd have well, to... I'm going to start by thinking these three back. I'd have to dig a them. little bit, sure. but you can definitely take those back. And this is a prototype, so... Sure. We'll find out. Or maybe we're doing things wrong. That's your cue. So that was my card over here. Uh, I don't think so. Then I'm going to go... I have three movement left. I'm going to go one, two. What I like to say on prototypes is if we're doing things wrong, we're just playing before they make the changes it's all good. It's that, all good. that other people will get. Have it to get to. <laughs> so now I'm over here. I have one movement left, which is important, because my final move is going to be battling you in port. I believe this is our first opportunity for you to roll two cubes against me in this tower. Uh, are you fighting me? No, but I'm passing through. You Fire. do not have to. I, I get to hit you. you. You take one flame. What's this two dice over here? The That's two fighting? dice. The two dice is if you oh, engage so I just with the. Yeah. If you're annoyed, if you're annoyed flame. by the uh, the cannons. No, no, like yeah. the cannons, I'm not annoyed by because I'm going to do this over here, and then rest control out of all the cannons, and okay. that wipes everything. Yes. And then I put a cube down here. I will also note that I have enough cubes to be up here now, which means I get this little bad boy. Yep. And I get cubes back. Look at that. How helpful. Okay. 
So that's done there. Now, oh, and we technically, all the icons that it suggests you keep cubes on yeah. are, are shown there. So we technically that you could have counted at yeah. any point in the board. I hear that makes sense. That's a good, that was a big source of my cubes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I now have one flag up there. When I get back to port, I'll be able to get a second flag, which is helpful. Um, and I have a whole bunch of guns over here. I have this barrel, which I'll produce with, because get that out of the way. I have this island, which I can produce with, which I guess I'll produce a coin. No reason not to at this point. Can I have a coin on this island? Uh, you certainly can. And I'll produce a coin. It does not. It gets two coins, because it gets modified. There you okay. are. And I'll immediately load that onto my boat. <clears throat> and then, with my last move, I will storm back into port. Now, do I have to go... Is your location considered separate than mine? No. Okay, so ports all the same are all, location. Ports are all adjacent. Right. So to begin with, I will dump off 12 barrels. 12, that's 8, plus 4 more barrels. Nice. And accomplish that objective. Nice. So I'm slowly catching up, just mm -hmm. a little bit behind you over here. Now, ultimately, can I sink your ship? Because that might be the game. I don't think I'll win either way, but that might be the game. So, let's cover sinking of That'd ships. be very interesting. So, if I knock you off here, by the way, do you get less victory points? Mm, don't believe so. What's this 4-3-2? Well, I, mean, I definitely lost... I, I get 3 instead of 4. Even the, because you have the permanent control? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Then I already have the 4. You already have the 4 okay, there. So, there's no yep. point doing something here that... I don't get you. the extra victory points. You did. I did lose yes. 3 victory points because those happy buildings dropped down. Happy to help. So, it looks like I have 1 cannon. Happy to help. 2 cannons. What a polite way to say... I, look, so here... This is a fun battle. This is actually going to be a battle here. I have one, two, three, four cannons, plus my five cannons over here, plus dropping two cubes. Now's a good time to draw your cards and we yep. act. Yep. Okay. So I'm getting five cannons and dropping two cubes. Now, effectively, a battle drop two cubes is like having two cannons. It is. So I get to, I'm going to withdraw a few cubes from up here because I'm not going to make that and I need all those cubes I can get. Oh, buddy boy. Because I have one, two, three, Just four, you wait. Five, six, seven. I'm dropping seven cubes against you. I'm okay. dropping... Uh, Four, yep. five, six total. Six against my seven. This is a battle. Even in port, I am a threat. I like it. Okay. Should we do it together? Imagine, do it? Out, imagine outside okay. of port. Let's just dump it together. Outside of port, yeah. Ready? Ready? Okay. So, first of all, I get two exploding cubes. Oh, no. So I'm missing a cube. I'm going to use a black here. cube. Uh, let's do, yeah, sounds good. Because okay. we know you have that. Exactly. And what happens here? Do I just, if it bumps the dice, it bumps you the dice? You certainly can. Okay. Okay, this is on the that, yep. not tilting. Roll that again. Rolled. And here we go. Okay, uh, you got on, another one. Up. Okay, that you might get an exploding dice. Nice. Yes. Oh, sorry. You might do it. You, you do this. I just did the whole handful. Okay, knocking things. Yep, it looks like we're all good. Okay. Everything's settled. Okay, and the way it works for those not aware, if it's in any way tilting or obvious where it is, that's where it is. If it's exactly on a, a bridge, then you re roll. Now, just look in so, here. You did not do enough fire to destroy you, to sink me. You really wanted to get you wanted to get so you five interestingly enough do damage. two fire to me. I do, which is actually pretty scary in its own way. I did one damage to yourself. Okay, here's this. Let's move these cubes as we go. So that's one and one. Um, I get one coin, which I'll take. It's a point. Mm -hmm. Can I get a coin over there? It goes onto my ship over here. Um, over here, this is where the winds come out. So it looks like you currently are winning me. I will move these. It looks like you won the battle. Wait, no, mm -hmm. I have two over oh, here. Oh, you win the I battle. I have five to your four, which is enough for me to win. Do you mm -hmm. have any default ability in your hand? No. Nope. I don't, no. Okay, so I win the battle, which will cover the consequences of because I don't even know. I get one more barrel, which is not helpful. Two more barrels, which is not helpful, sadly. And then finally, over here, you get two money, or a barrel, but I assume money, and I get one money. Can I get one money? There you are. Yep. Yeah. So, interesting thing about battles. They matter a lot when it comes to maintaining control and facing off, but the consequences aren't as heavy as you'd think. I gained one fire, mm -hmm. uh, which if I'd spilled over to five, I would have sunk, which would have cost sure. me five points okay. or everything on my ship. Uh, I, if I was a pirate, which we actually never saw happen in this game, at the end of every either of our turns, we can raise our flags. If I raised my flags, you would have to fight me when you move into a zone. Why is that important? Well, in a place like this, if I want to defend it, I become a extra level of threat to you. Yeah. for moving in, for trying to steal that from me. Um, I mean, if I can't done, risk putting out influence yeah. without attacking you. If I'd done that, this would have been, I would have had to lower my sails, so I no longer would have been a, maintained a threat to you. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only other consequence is really, you'll add a value up here, uh, which if you secure four naval battles, 
it, it is end game. It is victory condition. Yeah. But in this case, since we're already end at end game, game yes. it's not that big of a thing. But additionally, in general, just having more cubes here will produce good things for you on average. Oh, for sure. So in general, more cubes is still better, even though the actual battle consequence is... Well, and there's there's definitely value to plundering. There's definitely value. Yep. Like, the opportunity there is, is high. And if you were battling a merchant ship, you would have secured the back of their card, which oftentimes has bonuses that you don't get on the front. Which we so. never fully explored. Which we but never just an example over here. This one has a sale or draw card yep. and on the back when discarding this card you place it at the bottom of your deck instead of your discard pile so you can see it again and over here win lose i'm not actually sure about that you gain a coin yeah. in advance yes. yeah so yeah so that that seems to be it i think at this point we proceed with any game scoring i yeah. do not feel confident at all in the slightest remotely i am pretty sure you know you this. have more territory control than me which i'm oh, interested about matter. it might let's, matter a lot let's find out i'm really curious let's if my out. If my celebration was is, preemptive... You could be the Victor Crumb of this game. <laughs> choosing to end it on your own terms. But you thought you won when you ended it. So maybe not. I did think I'd won when I ended it. Because I thought, for some reason, just ending yeah. was, yeah, in, its, caught up. was in its caught own up. way winning. I mean, we all, we all play by our own rules when you think about it. Alright, let's, so. uh, let's check victory condition and we'll get back to you with the final score. Sounds like a plan. Alright, I believe I have my score. I have mine. I think you won, but I'm not sure. Okay. 51. You you got 51? Yes, what do you have? I won by three, I believe. Three points. 54. That is insane. 54. Yes. And I drove endgame. So I had a total of, I believe, nine, 21 points from my actual coins. I had five So if points. you'd sunk me, if you'd successfully sunk me in that end battle, you would have won the would game. Would have been the game. Would have been the game. That end battle could have been everything. I like how close this is. I, I really liked it. I mean, you really drove the coins, which is phenomenal. You drove endgame, scoring mm -hmm. points and controlling the board. But in the process, I was able to get a decent amount of control on the actual island. Secured a lot of territory in the yeah. reef. Uh, and and did a decent job at pulling some victory back yourself. This was tight. You would very tight if game. You would have won by almost 10 points if you'd sunk me. You would have gained the three points from that victory. I would have been cost five. Five points. That was potentially more significant if you'd if you if you saw me driving Endgame and had pursued me a turn earlier. It would have. I did. I had no clue it was that close. I knew you were driving it. I thought you were turns away. Yep. I think the lesson here is always attack Jesse early. <laughs> no, that's not the lesson. That is my takeaway. For those of you that it just skipped to like a final thoughts section, if I actually did a timestamp, which would be a nice thing to do. do time but, you know, my audience loves timestamps. I know your audience loves for them. Your but your. But you're good at doing them and it's do them consistently. Stamps. The amount of editing that goes into your videos, you can do a timestamp. Here's the thing, though. Sure. The amount of editing that goes into my videos means that by the time I've stayed up all night producing the video and I'm launching it, I'm trying to go to sleep before I spend time putting timestamps no into time a three-hour gameplay video. Yeah, just pick final thoughts. One timestamp. You're not wrong. I am getting better at timestamps primarily based off of how consistent you are with doing them. Only because my audience, and again, I love this, but my audience tells me what they want, and if, as long as I can cater to it reasonably, I will do so. Sure, sure. Uh, for those of you that just skipped to final thoughts, uh, you're known for being as direct. direct and honest as possible. Yeah. And I'm known for making aggressively pretty footage. Yeah. So combined, we have an aggressively pretty video uh, with that now, in the final thought section, what's your thoughts? So, it is one play. Now, I am a firm believer that you can have an opinion after one play. First impressions matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, granted, anyone else can say this, that, the other, it's sure. better, it's worse, but one play. I thoroughly enjoyed this game, and I thought it would be a poor showing with two players. It is an area control yep. game that, for some reason, perhaps because of the infinite cubes that escalate as you continuously put things down, yep. it works as an area control game. It's also a game where there's enough going on in each island that you're still motivated to travel, to pass through, to yep. journey around this board without necessarily getting control. Yep. But that once you're there, control can be so tempting, can be so appealing. We only had one battle the entire game, which is is light, and yet I don't feel like I don't feel like anything out. was missing. And I'd, I'd love to do this more. When well, the battle was fun. It was fun. It was interesting. It was fun. And yeah. it could have made a break, break that could have made or make make or break the it's, game. It could have been the deciding factor, which so, I actually really liked as well. Overall, and also as you level up your cards, you really get to see a a journey of, not journey, a, a plan of action as to which cards will work well with each other, where you put those upgrades, For me, which it's a characters journey. you upgrade. The way, I mean, journey. the way, when I was first being pitched this game consistently, yep. we've talked about this, yes. I was told about the mechanics and the cool dice rolling for the battle and the fact that it was an open world, and it wasn't until you and I had a conversation and, and you were like, no, Jesse, you don't understand. 
the the upgrades you're doing is your crew gaining experience, getting better at what they do, more proficient. It is yeah. it is a story about you being a a tight knit sailing party and, and leveling up and experiencing and matters. journeying across the world. And that was the that was the point where I became interested in this game, because yeah. Jan Jan loves mechanics, and this is one that he, from a mechanical basis, thought was going to be incredible and was super excited about. And everyone was selling me a mechanics, it and work. I just didn't care, you know. This this told a this told a story um, that fit exactly into the line of, of the pirate experience that I wanted to have. Um, and this is this is excellent. And we've talked about pirate games as well. You're a, you're a pirate fan. Big fan. Uh, you don't think there's enough of them out there. Correct. I would say the most recent pirate experience that I've had that hit every dot, and I thought to myself, I really don't need any other pirate games. Is Forgotten Waters. I haven't played the that one. story elements in that, the experience of journeying together, and it is much more choose your own adventure and action selection. Um, that that hit every button I thought I needed. This hits a, this hits it in a different route. Uh, and and both of them right now stand as like, if you're gonna pick a pirate game out, um, go for either one. Yeah. Now I will say or pros go and cons. For both, genuinely. One thing I've tried to, st I want to start doing because my my audience has requested this is how yep. do you know if someone's being positive unless they can also be negative? No, of course. So I want to be negative. As it's to it's the concept that we have around right for you, wrong for you. Yeah, right for you, wrong for you. Exactly. This this game, hopefully, we display it in a way that lets you know if you'd enjoy it. Now because I enjoyed it. Yeah. If your tastes are the same as mine, well then this might be a good gauge. But if they're not, I would like to give everyone as much information as possible exactly. so that they can gauge if this would be a good experience. So in terms of that, in terms of giving the cons, uh, the first one's not a con so much, but I was surprised at how quick Endgame was. I thought this would be a longer game. I was surprised you were able to drive Endgame so quickly. That's sure. not a con, because I also think I got, I did what a lot of things. We have one mm -hmm. unexplored area in the board. My deck is getting thicker and thicker from all the upgrades I got. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you drove Endgame early enough that I didn't get to experience this. I just was surprised. I felt con. I felt like I successfully drove Endgame earlier, like mm -hmm. in terms of the ramp of this game. Because I feel like fun. I lean towards early game ending. It worked for you, especially uh, as I was getting more and more intimidated. And I and I was very purposeful. Yes. About every every decision I made was around the idea of driving Endgame. And if you'd caught it earlier, you could have extended awesome. this game by five or six. Even turns. just by moving my guy to the right area and planting a flag. Re yeah, removing or removing cues. Removing there, my removing my territory here. Hundred percent. Sinking me one step earlier. Yeah. Uh, you know, planting a flag and, and 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 pushing it in your own way. There was there was things you you certainly could have done to reduce my end game drive. Now the biggest con I have for this game does not in any way attract detract from my enjoyment of this game. I have a pledge in this game and I will be happily keeping it. Sure. But the biggest con I would give is something that I already have this opinion going in. There's no news here, but it is a con if it's a problem for you. Which is, there is luck in this game. There is, the, especially with the dice rolling, there's luck in terms of which cards come out. Do sure. they fit your strategy? Do they not? There's enough strategy and choice that I believe you can plan around whatever the, the ocean, the, the waters, the, the island throws at you. I believe there's a lot of choices to be made and those choices will determine. Like we saw how close this game was. You mm -hmm. pursued one strategy and it worked well for you. I pursued another strategy and I almost came to the cusp of being able to, mm -hmm. to drag that win out. There's certainly strategy, but if you're looking at a, this as a hardcore Euro, it is not. It is a an Ameritrash style. It's a me mesh up of mechanics of both Euro mechanics, deck building, deck group, uh, card crafting, area control. It has all that, but it certainly has luck in it as well. It doesn't bother me, but that would be the biggest con I can give it as of right now. I, I really enjoy this. Well, and then just in terms of, of weight and accessibility, um, takes up a decent amount of table space yeah. when it comes to multiple players. You know, in a yeah. two-player game, we still have a full table here, and I would not... I would not attempt to teach this game to people who are not familiar with board games as a hobby. Sure. Um, just just for context, I think it's really fun. I think people could have a good experience with but it. But there's a lot going on. Um, there's area control, there's card crafting, there's this variable victory objective. We, there's a lot going on. In the first play of this, we, we I read through and prepped for probably an hour and a half. We spent probably 20 minutes teaching and walking through it. Not a negative, it's a thing that exists yeah. in games. And this was this was easy enough to get our teeth into. But I wouldn't pull this out with anyone under, you know, Jan and I and, and kind of my core game group. The sure. ones that I pull things out like Scythe and, and you know, I, I'm not going to go home to, to my family and, and set this on the table. Seems reasonable. So. Although I will say, my wife is definitely a very avid gamer and I think she would really enjoy this. She can this. do it, yeah. I think the, the, thematically there's a draw here. Yeah. That, I, that, that pushes it almost down a level in terms of accessibility. At the end of the day, this was fun. And it might like be that. because I won, but I'm not sure. I mean, I lost. <laughs> 
And I lost after making a big deal about how immaterial it was if I won. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I still enjoyed it. This was fun. Thank you for joining. Thank you for playing. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, hopefully this is giving giving you a good uh, a good sense of Dead Reckoning. Um, and uh, and let us know if you are already a backer since the Kickstarter is already yep. live and, and yep. functioning. And this was daily just a, unlocks. An example of what we were showing off. If you were considering being a backer but needed something to tip you over the edge, I'd love to hear if you watched through to the end of this and and this was either a positive or a negative for that decision. Um, and lastly, uh, let us know what else you'd like to see Alex and I do together. Apparently. We're both stubborn enough that we're willing to make, uh, we're willing to drive across the country and make things happen. Whatever the case, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. I thought I got to do that. You have to say, we'll see you next time. No, I get to, you get, you're supposed to do the whole, remember to do the important thing. Then yep. you lean over to me I and can. I say, would you, you like to? Again. You, know, again. you know exactly what's happening. All right. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing and play more games. It was so close to the correct ending. Get out and play what some a, games? What a shame. You you had me pause, reset. I'm leaving all of this in Wait, there. so what did I do, what did I do wrong? What did... So so the line is, we'll practice here. This is the first time. Sure, here. sure. Whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play more games. Get out and play more games. Let's do it again. We'll see you next time. Next, next day. Go ahead. And thank you. Whatever you do, <laughs> remember to do the important thing. You, that was yours, right? Get out and play more games. Thank you. Did I, did I do it right? You, I mean, you were, you were close. very close. close. I should pull, I should pull end game video or end, end, end recording video of Jan's first attempts <laughs> at, at end, end, end of the video. I just, I like the back and forth. It's fun. It is. It is a fun back and forth. Thank you so much.